Okay, here we are, Tuesday, June the 4th, 2012. Tail end of what's been a very pleasant Diamond Jubilee weekend. And uh, just had to get out and get some fresh air though. So, today is a gamble in probably three respects. Firstly, this is a walk that is brand new. So I'm following instructions that have not yet been checked. Secondly, the weather. The biggest gamble of all. Uh, weathermen predict rain by about 3 p.m. Uh, so that's why I've come east to try and steer clear of it for as long as I can. Uh, London's going to get a shower earlier, so this is a reasonably long walk of about 12 and a half miles in the Essex countryside. Um, not my favourite county, but I'm assured by the author of this walk that uh, this is not your typical Essex walk. So, on your head be it, Thomas. Uh, third gamble really uh, is the fact that uh, I haven't been able to buy any sandwiches yet, so I'm hoping there'll be a decent selection at the reservoir, uh, Hanning Field I think it's called, reservoir, off the top of my head. Get something there later. So, here we go. This is a free walk that doesn't yet have a number uh, as I speak. Hopefully I'll have one by the time I edit the video. Um, and it's from Wickford in Essex to Battles Bridge, about five miles up the railway line. But uh, as I say, this is a 12 and a half mile circular. Approaching the gap in the hedge next to the electricity pylon or telegraph pole in this case, with the new building development just visible through the hedge, right, hedge there. Courtesy notice, considerate builder's scheme, no doubt. So leaving the construction site, we now come out into open country. Wild rose there. I'm not gonna to say too much about flowers in the future because uh, I've noticed upon checking in the reference books that my knowledge is absolutely atrocious. Can't tell the difference between Speedwell and Forget-Me-Not. So, that's it. Turning right up here. The squeeze gate, <coughs> excuse me, referred to in the text is indeed gonna be a tight squeeze. Firstly, because of the uh, overgrown bushes here is the path and as I say getting in there there's a squeeze gate somewhere thank you Mr Wren which uh, brings us out into this field and that is indeed a very tight squeeze anyone bigger than average He's going to have problems getting through that squeeze gate, I would suggest. Particularly with a rucksack on your back. Looking at the exit to the squeeze gate from the uh, other side. Emerging out into the lane where um, we take a left turn. Number of way marks there. Our onward journey is the uh, way marker straight on through a metal kissing gate and taking this right hand path with that timbered building over there in the distance. Very good in these austerity times that Essex County Council are maintaining this footpath very well with a delightful meadow full of flowers next to it saw on country file at the weekend how some authorities are just letting paths go to rack and ruin at the moment they identified Norfolk as an example which surprises me actually seeing as I was down there the other week and uh, their tourism relies so heavily on it interesting 
It's a health club uh, to the right down there somewhere. Our onward journey straight ahead through the hedge tunnel. But uh, yeah, through there somewhere is a health club. Interesting. Passing the footpath marker on the post next to the pond, which smells like some kind of sewerage outlet, the way the wind's blowing towards me. And all that evidence down there. The church at Downham. Which according to the text is worth a detour for its sweeping panoramic views. Let's find out. As you can see and possibly hear, certainly catches the wind up here, which indicates to me that that rain is on its way. Just a race now between me and it, and one that I'm probably going to lose. It now being 12 noon. Having started the walk around 11.30, I forgot to mention. So, oh, views to the west and southwest. Yep, certainly not bad. Quite a high point for Essex. Views to the built up south. And talking of high points, this church is almost smack bang on the 50 metre contour line. So about 150 foot up, or 160, and uh, it would have made a good lunchtime stop had it not been so early. But there you go. And views to the east. A couple of uh, nice benches here. Interesting headstone here with uh, an inscription. And a number of headstones, I guess, along the fence. Not dissimilar to those I saw in the wall down at, uh, my goodness, where was it? Zone five walk I did, circular. Knockstone, I think it was. Memorial to the war dead, who enabled us to celebrate a diamond jubilee today. Let's not forget that. Or this weekend. Information board here about Downham Church and Churchyard, telling us a bit of history about the churchyard, the dovecote and stables under the uh, Lich Gate, I think it's called. Unlike the last time I was down in Essex, the footpaths today are quite damp and muddy underfoot, as you can see here. But then again, this is a bridleway, so no coincidence. It's probably been churned up by the horses. Now, those cows over there are unsure about the uh, forthcoming weather, with um, probably 60% of them stood up, 40% sat down. So, let's hope the 60% are right. The optimists, the glass half full crowd, fingers crossed. Wind is getting ominously stronger though. Okay, just uh, past the Beaver House uh, and the Beaver Lodge, and now stood out of outside a property called the Bungalow uh, with the two armed footpath sign on my right, and we're turning up this lane. Ninety-nine percent of those are standing. Classic. Essex scenery. Now this narrow part of the footpath has been quite churned up by horses but yet again it is a bridleway so what can you do? A 
approaching the car salvage works. Yeah, you can see the uh, tiered stacking system referred to in the text. I thought there was going to be a shortage of metal in the world. Not judging by this salvage plant, unless he's saving it for the price to go up even further. Absolutely hundreds of vehicles in here, some of them quite new as well. Just like scraping all the burnt bread off a piece of toast, this old, uh, I think it's an elm, possibly an oak, has had all its burnt bark taken off. Either that or it's fallen off. Anyway, that's what that, that's what that reminded me of. Continuing ahead on a narrow grassy path. Road swings round to the left there. Okay, having just crossed that rocky stile there, uh, we're now entering Crows Heath Community Woodland with an information board there about what can be seen, including dragonflies, barn owls, pendicular oak, marbled white butterfly, dormouse, comma, painted ladies, all good stuff. More grassy walking, very pleasant underfoot as well. And then right past the decrepit gate. Lovely greens around at the moment, delightful with the uh, trees in full leaf. Such a shame that uh, we've only got three more weeks to go before the longest day. It's a bit depressing after that I find. As I say, this is my favourite time of the year. The text refers to a wire fence on the right, but I think that should say on the left. Same side as the decrepit gate, looking at this. Certainly no fence on my right, unless I've taken a wrong turn. Quite an overgrown section this, in the uh, height of spring. What a delightful cacophony that is. Mainly Robin song. And as usual, an airplane to destroy the sound. I'm stood next to these fire beaters, which is a bit ominous in the height of summer. According to the text, this should be a, an open grassy area. Certainly is open. Plenty of cow's parsley. Don't see a house ahead of me, a white house, but uh, no doubt that's hidden behind the trees. Soon find out. That's rather naughty. This is the garden of the White House, I believe. And they're uh, allowing dogs to run free, which is absolutely smack bang out of order. And I hope someone reports that. Verging onto the lane and the White House there, which obviously, uh, when the text was written in the winter, I presume, could be clearly seen. Not now. So we emerge out to uh, Essex, Essex and Suffolk Waters Hanningfield Reservoir Nature Reserve, which is uh, about 800 odd acres, I believe it was, of flooded farmland. The text is full of very good background information, as is Google, so I won't natter on too much about all this particularly as I'm racing against those black clouds. Other interesting, as you can see here, this reservoir is pretty much full. Goes against what I saw in Essex the other week, down at uh, Debden. Great selection of ducks and geese here. There's a golden eye. on the other side of the road 
the overflow, I guess. So here we go, into Hannon Field Nature Reserve. Has a coffee bar and uh, refreshments, conveniences, etc. within. Information board here about the uh, reservoir, nature reserve. Plenty more on Google. Yeah, as I thought, the uh, reservoir is 96.2% full at the minute. Apparently the highest level this year is 98.4. So, it's like the April showers have replenished our stocks. Now let me see amongst the birds that have been spotted if anyone's seen a cuckoo. Amazingly no. Incredible. That's the path down to Lister Hyde. We continue straight on here by that number one marker. Merging into the open area. And what a great bit of uh, trellis work over there. Don't do it like that anymore, do they? So here we are. I think I might go and have a look in the rural hide. Rural hide! See what it's all about. See uh, what's on the water. Here we go, approaching the hide. So no commentary here here on. So in the event of early rain, that would in fact make a uh, good little lunchtime stop. There's a couple in there having their lunch um, anyway. 
Now, what I noticed on the wall on that chart that I filmed in there was that the bird I earlier identified as a golden eye, in fact, wasn't. Um, it was a tufted duck, male and female. So, I couldn't see the tuft at the time. That's my excuse, anyway. Perardu ad astra. Some mallard having a well earned rest. Turning right here for the fishing lodge. This is rather a very, uh, this is a, a rather pleasant nature reserve, I must admit. And um, even though it's a bank holiday, not too many people around, which is just how I like it. Must have been put off by the forecast. Plenty of resting points around as well. Good to see some so, traditional hedge manufacture here. Views out towards the reservoir. Delightful, eh? The sun's even poking out again. Fingers crossed. Nice memorial to a Korean War veteran there. Walking on the path closer to the water's edge. Okay, quarter past two, lunch has been had at a cafe on the water and this is the um, rather pleasant view that you get. rain, if it's going to come, is going to come in the next hour. So let's see how accurate the forecasters are. Onward journey, I believe, is over that way, past the uh, picnic area, which is an alternative. It's where I would have gone today had I not, or had I brought my sandwiches, but uh, as it turns out, all's well, ends well. Some examples here of uh, record breaking fish that have been caught perch, for example. So for those wanting to go on to the recommended lunchtime stop <coughs> at uh, the old windmill, uh, I'm not going to take that route because that adds another 600 700 metres onto my journey and with the threat of rain looming I can do without that right now. So um, I'm going to try and find the rest of the route from here because uh, from the windmill we'll come back to this point anyway. Local area clearly shown on this map here. Well, inadvertently, trying to find the footpath again, I've ended up at the old windmill. How's about that? Doesn't help me find the uh, ongoing pathway. Bit of confusion around that. Might need clarifying. Interesting. A decade ago already. Just as we're celebrating the Diamond Jubilee. So that was done in the Golden. Incredible. Anyway, still trying to find the uh, rest of the route. Trying to find a local that can direct me. 
Right, finally got back on track. Just something not quite right about that sentence, beginning after lunch. A little bit confusing. Anyway, that's the imposing house known as Broadmead. And clearly over there is St Peter's Church, which is uh, our onward journey. And those clouds are getting ominously darker. Fingers crossed. Turn right here, following the butterfly symbol footpath, over this stile, towards the church in the distance there. St Peter's Church, South Hanningfield. storm porch this is absolutely ancient look at those leaded windows in fact you get a better view um, with the light coming through the other side twelfth or thirteenth century so the notes say And then opposite, you come out uh, opposite this lovely thatched building. Very patriotic as well. Fantastic. Stuff. Cows are all standing in this field. Quite high up here as well, as I'll show you in a second. Same about the pylons. But uh, that is the view you get, and if I'm not mistaken, I've just felt my first spot of rain. Damn. You can just catch the edge of the tennis courts over there on my right, so the view from that thatch property is quite magnificent, with the exception of the pylons, that is. About a uh, 70 metre mark here, so uh, 200 odd feet up. View back to that thatch property. Further views across the valley. Well, I guess you get pylons down in Dedham Vale, so, uh, you know, it would be better if they were underground, but there you go. So, the instructions indicate to not cross that style into the wood, but to follow this marker, sharp left. Which is rather surprising, but there you go. Delightful sea of yellow here. Buttercups, I believe. Just before we get to the waterworks up here on the left. Very topical at the moment with uh, Prince Philip going into hospital. That's the um, banks of the reservoir over there in the distance. Walking through the uh, rather overgrown footpath through the wooded area towards the very large pylon somewhere in the distance here. Plenty of this lo lovely crimson coloured flower out at the moment. Again, I won't even hazard a guess. So there it is like a giant robot type beast and we're walking along right underneath it so the quicker I get through here the better almost expecting uh, Godzilla to turn up in a minute okay the obvious path across the field is no longer so obvious farmers not been very helpful here uh, and hasn't um, ploughed a furrow for us but I would guess if you aim for that oak tree over there on its own that's 80 degrees 
and you can see the busy dual carriageway in the distance. Yeah, traipsing through a broad bean crop here, and I think the one concession the farmer has made is in the very distance there. You can just see the tip, I believe, of a white marker. Oops. Yep, then you come out on this wooden plank bridge. So um, the white markers are in fact not signposts for us, but um, young tree saplings inside. Some of that broad bean crop is chest height at the moment. So you're supposed to be able to walk diagonally right across this broad bean crop towards that feature over there which is called Cannon's Barns but the farmer has um, left it unploughed so I guess he's expecting it to go around the edge which is rather naughty. So now stood by Cannon Barns having traips around the edge of the field you can clearly see here the footpath goes diagonally across that field or should do to that corner over there where I was stood next to the bridge but uh, the farmer has not ploughed a way through it so Essex County Council if you're watching please note sure if this is the gap in the hedge there's certainly a footbridge there across a ditch but uh, it's so overgrown I can't tell let's get through the other side Deedy brings you out to some steps and there's the footpath sign up ahead just in position for a pillbox and uh, a fair aroma around here what with the manure and the um, rape in the field behind it just having crossed the busy A130. Okay, at this easily missed concrete footpath sign, crossing over the plank bridge into the field yonder. Sounds like a hay field that has been freshly cut, now being baled by that clever device over there. Incredible. Just think how we've moved on from doing it by hand. Again, this wooden plank bridge could easily be missed 15 metres before the edge of the field. That bend there being determined as the edge of the field. So uh, be cautious here, especially in the summer when everything's overgrown. You traipse through some undergrowth, you end up on another wooden bridge into this wheat field. Unlike the previous farmer, this farmer has been considerate to walkers and cut a path across the field. That's all it takes. Well, I'm not sure how the farmer's cut that little uh, pathway through, but I'm sure glad he has. Quite uh, springy and wet underfoot, but uh, saves a long walk around the edge. Well, clearly the text was written in midwinter because right now with all this vegetation around you can only just make out the large pond on your right. It's almost a lake actually. Turn left here at this metal gate. It's now four o'clock and it's just starting to rain. So I'm not sure how much more filming I'm going to be able to do unfortunately. Uh, the rain's arrived about an hour later than forecast, but arrive it has. Just come out of a pretty overgrown section between hedges there. Heading on through a clearer section towards a farmyard track, I believe. Rain's come and gone, I hope. Spitting, really. So, still filming. Well, the official footpath runs up beside this rape field and it's very difficult to pass. There's our uh, footpath marker ahead. I think you might come out at the same point 
following the track to the left. We'll find out in a minute. And that would be an easier route, albeit unofficial. Especially at this time of year. Farm track would bring you out at the same point and would make for easier walking right now. Probably not in winter, but right now it does. And also, as you can see, you don't get too much of a view of Wickford from this point at the moment either, because of the height of the rape. It's good to see. Maintained by Essex Ramblers. H2S. Oh, that's Harlow to South End Walk, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Or something like that. The Harlow Cam, can't remember. Turn right here through the gap in the hedge. Swallows are now quite low, bombing the flies on this field, so indication of rain as well. Although it is still, thank God, just spitting at the moment. Pretty good views from up here. Again, about 200, meet, uh, 200 feet high, 70 metre mark thereabouts. Following the fenced in grassy path downhill along the valley side. View backwards. I almost disturbed a fox just now. Almost trod on the thing. Quite a young looking one. Makes a change for me. They're usually dead when I get them. And there's a sight you don't thankfully see very often. A poor little swallow makes this week's death. Me having just mentioned it further back there. So here we go. Hay crop. Just having come down sulfural close and a serious bit of land grabbing going on behind me. Just thinking back to that poor swallow, he's come all the way from Africa lasted about five minutes in England and died in Essex. Not much of a life, is it? Following yet another delightful greenway south of Rettendon. So I stood next to this white top footpath marker and uh, the main route into Battles Bridge clearly marked here. Uh, I'm still intending to complete in Battles Bridge seeing as the rain is still spitting as opposed to pouring so um, fingers crossed it'll stay like that it's getting on my camera lens now though as you can see well here we are back at Battles Bridge tiny little uh, single platform it's quarter to six um, and the rain has been coming down pretty consistently for the last hour or so so I wasn't able to film from around the section near Mark's farm in the text uh, and there the instructions got a little bit um, hazy anyway after the bit where it says uh, For your turn 40 meters right then 50 meters uh, and then I couldn't find the easily missed hole in the hedge but um, I've managed to get back here somehow using the map but I don't think I've come the right route and I wasn't able to film it anyway because of the weather but up to that point for Essex this wasn't a bad walk at all well done Thomas um, my pedometer is showing that I've walked 11 and a half miles uh, meant to be about 12 and a half so perhaps a section around Mark's farm takes a bit longer but that walk's taken me half eleven to uh, half five-ish, about six hours. So I would imagine it's longer than my pedometer's recorded. Anyway, not a bad walk as I say, shame about the weather. 
uh, for the latter part of the day anyway. I can't give this walk a number yet, so I can't say I've completed free walk whatever, because I don't know what a number of it is. But I will put that on the title uh, of the video as soon as I get it.